I think finance is this weird thing where we basically associate it with, oh, it's what happens or you deal with it in the future when you need to retire or if you need to go to college, you get out a student loan now. So I think we have different views of um, personal finance and uh, what it all entails. I talked with my wife and luckily she got on board. It was kind of it was definitely trickier at first because she was like, I don't want to stop spending money just to save it for 30, 40 years down the line. And I'm like, don't worry, we can still spend money, but we can also plan for the future. In this episode of DevQ, we're going to talk about how to make finance investing exciting, how to make paying off debt something that you look forward to, how to get you so, so pumped and so, so excited about your money, money, money. So, <laughs> well, that's a way to introduce you, Paul. I've never done that before. How are you doing today? Doing pretty good. How are you doing? Very well. And I'm really happy to have you on this episode, Paul, because I think you have a very unique approach, and especially for younger generations, on your way to present how to invest, how to put your financial house in order, and especially tackle debt. Because unfortunately, now more than ever, many generations, whether it be younger generations, our generation, older generations, debt is always prevalent and everywhere ubiquitous at all times, unfortunately. So, Let's try to f- talk about ways in which, you know, you could give us really good insights on really how to tackle that, especially and just having a good solid financial base that can, you know, really make us feel excited about our future instead of having that worry in our life. So let's talk about your story first, Paul, because I think it's really interesting for people who are getting to know you for the first time. So please explain to our audience who you are, what you do, and then if you can go into your experience of paying off twenty thousand K thousand dollars of debt in two and a half years with a sixty thousand dollar income. Yeah, of course. Well I'm happy to be here. Um I'm Paul and um I run a Instagram channel called The Wealthy Habits. And the purpose of it is to just it's really focused on millennials, uh, help millennials learn how to pay off their debt, but then also invest for the future. One is great, but both is infinitely better. Um, so I just have a desire to help educate others on finance. I think finance is this weird thing where we basically associate it with, oh, it's what happens or you deal with it in the future when you need to retire or if you need to go to college, you get out of student loan now. So I think we have different views of um, personal finance and uh, what it all entails. And so I just like breaking it down, trying to make it as simple as possible and a little bite-sized nuggets um, just to help you get something to think about throughout your day. So I started The Wealthy Habit about a year ago. Um, Currently, I'm on Instagram, plan in the future to expand to YouTube as well to have more uh, in-depth Uh, conversations on finances. Um, But it really started, I would say, back in 2018. Um, My wife and I had bought a house the the year before, and uh, we decided, hey, now we need a new car. We can afford this amount of payment each month. And unfortunately, after we got the car, it was in the shop for the first eight or nine weeks out of the first three months that we had it. So I was like, eh, this probably wasn't the best idea, but we got the warranty on it. So I'm like, okay, we, we should probably keep it because we got the warranty. But then flash forward a few months to November of 2018, and I read uh, Dave Ramsey's Total Money Makeover and, you know, in there, he talks about a car loan and what else you could do with that money. And so I'm like, oh, I really want to get rid of this car now and see, you know, what could we do by investing it and where, where that could go. So um, from there, talked with my wife and luckily she got on board. It was kind of, it was definitely trickier at first because she was like, I don't want to stop spending money just to save it for 30, 40 years down the line. And I'm like, don't worry, we can still spend money, but we can also plan for the future. So from that point going forward, um, we actually got pregnant right after I got all excited about, um, you know, paying off debt. So at that point, I was like, okay, we need to pay off all this debt, but we also have a baby on the way. Babies are expensive. So (laughs) 
So after she got uh, pregnant, I'm like, okay, we'd started to do a little bit of extra payments towards our car. But I'm like, we need to start stockpiling cash as much as we can for this baby because we had a high deductible health plan and it was just expensive. So um, we started putting cash aside, but uh, turns out between, you know, the labor and delivery and then our baby was actually in the the NICU, the neonatal intensive care unit um, for the first 28 days. And that racks up quite a, a hospital bill. Luckily, we weren't on the hook for anywhere near all of it. It was close to a total of like 350000 And our part was a small fraction of that, but still thousands. Um, so between that and the car loan that we had, we're like, okay, we have about $20,000 that we want to pay off and we want to do it as soon as possible. Because I'm like, this car, it's, it's okay now. It's no longer having those issues that it had it at the beginning, but um, it's just kind of weighing on me having this $314 payment every single month going out, whereas that could be spent towards investing or having fun with it in the here and now. Um, So my wife and I uh, really focused in, um, did side hustles. We um, sold gluten-free donuts. Uh, We flipped furniture. We refinished furniture. Um, I did DoorDash and Grubhub, that sort of thing. So we did a whole bunch of different side hustles to try to build up our income a little bit. But the biggest part was really getting on a budget. So I'm like, we bring in this money, but I have no no idea where it goes every month. So once we, you know, looked at last month's expenses, I'm like, okay, there is five hundred to a thousand dollars every month where I have no idea why we spent it here or where it's going. So we started being more intentional with first what our spending was, um, you know, we still ate out, um, and, you know, continued a similar lifestyle, but we were just intentional with where that money was going. And so that allowed us to, you know, between side hustles and, um, being intentional with, um, our budget, we were able to put another 500 to a thousand dollars a month towards the medical debt and towards the car loan. So after about a year, we were able to pay off the, uh, the medical debt. And then further after that, after two and a half years, we were able to finally pay off our car um, at the end of 2020, which was a wonderful feeling. Um, and at that point, we're trying to figure out, do we need a new car? Um, and at that point, you know, the, the pandemic started a few months. Um, was it after that? I'm sorry, Dev. No, yeah, you're right. No, Paul, timeline gets blurry after all these many months around 2020, March, Mm -hmm. April, that time, that time period, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. So we we paid off our car. um, And yeah, we have since then we haven't taken on any other consumer debt, you know, we still have our mortgage, but we're very intentional with, you know, definitely avoid credit card debts. Um, I personally will never get another car loan again. just because that, that weight felt so huge and not having it now feels so good. This is very interesting, Paul. Let me, if you don't mind, let me just uh, interject for a moment. The, there's, there's two things I want to ask you. One, how in the world do you keep each other motivated to be disciplined to, to do this? Because I don't think there's many couples that can have that discipline teamwork to have that goal of like, okay, we're going to tackle this. We're going to do all these things, no matter what to, to pay it off. So maybe you can talk number one to that process and that way of doing things between you, you and your wife to really mm-hmm. hit that incredible goal. And my, the second question is, is wanting to do this, like something maybe out of fear or is it just because like you you just don't want to have a certain level of stress or anxiety related to the issue of debt itself it is come out as a state of fear where where does that come from yeah so the, the our plan was once we started having kids that my wife wanted to stay home with them And so she still works, but it's not near the same income as before. And so I'm like, okay, once we start having kids, we are going to have more expenses and less total income. So we need to minimize any debts just so that we don't have that burden just kind of smack us in the face. Like it kind of did because we weren't expecting to get pregnant at that time. Um, I'd been brought up that you don't do, you know, you don't take out any debt on a credit card. 
Um, uh, there are other types of debt that, you know, my family was more okay with, but I was like, you know what, there's something else more fun that I could do with this money other than this car payment every single month. Um, I want to plan for the future. I don't want to have to depend on any sort of government program at the time where I come to retire. I want it to be icing on the cake. And so I'm like, I'm excited to, you know, take control of our financial future um, and just get into the driver's seat. So that was really the motivation was, you know, shrinking uh, income, growing expenses. So that part was a little bit of fear, but it was mostly just excited for what we could do with it. And she's totally on board with you and you're both on the same playing field when it comes to that. So we are, we are now. Uh, in the beginning, it was a, a little rough just because we were trying to realize that we could still spend money um, and still have fun, but that there was uh, you know, just bounds on what we were doing. But at the same time, we also knew, hey, if it's in the budget, we can spend it. We don't have to feel guilty about going and on this nice date or whatever it is because we'd already agreed ahead of time um, that that's how we were going to be using our money. So one of the questions you also asked was, how do we stay motivated? Yeah. So that was definitely a, a roller coaster because there was times where I was more motivated and there was times where she was more motivated. Um, but we really just took a team approach to it. Um, so obviously getting on the same page with your spouse for anything is super important. Um, and your finances is one of those for sure. So we just kept reminding each other, Hey, this is why we're doing it. We're setting up our family for financial success. Um, you know, at the point where we retire, I don't want to have to reduce spending or our lifestyle. I actually want to be able to, you know, give to, to charity, give to family. If we want to go on a family trip to Hawaii, drop twenty, thirty thousand $30,000 and bring our kids and grandkids um, and not even have to think about it. So we started focusing away from, oh, I'm losing out on getting a Chipotle today to, you know, we're, we're preparing for all these awesome things that will happen in the future too. Are you, would you say either yourself or your wife are materialistic people or are, are you like, like sort of discretionary money that you have after expenses and everything else, how are you spending that money? I mean, is Paul obsessed with Mustangs and like tattoos? Is that your thing? Or <laughs> is your, is your wife like any, uh, what are the, the, the brands Dior? I don't know. You know, mm -hmm. my wife knows those things on me, but uh, are you those kind of people? Or are you like, okay, when we do have extra money, it's more for the experiences of life. How, how are you? How do you, yeah. So that's a great question. We, we're definitely more of an experiences as opposed to materials. Um, on a month to month basis, or even like birthday, I'm like, I can't really think of an item that I want purchased for me. Um, I don't know if you've ever done it, but there's a, this book by Gary Chapman called The Five Love Languages. And for me, gift giving is the lowest one on there. So I'm like, and that way it kind of works out because i really don't, you know, get too excited by that, but I do love experiences. Um, so each year we try to do a family, uh, getaway trip. It's still in our state. Um, but we will go away for two or three or four days. Um, just have some fun family time. Um, all of our food, we've already priced it out, um, and just have it built into our budget already. So, um, I would say also my wife is not a materialistic person as well. Um, you know, she likes going shopping, uh, but I think she more enjoys the experience of it. Uh, I think, you know, if we did have more wiggle room, she would like to spend more, but it wasn't, it wasn't a huge, um, luckily for us, it, it wasn't that big trying to overcome material things. Um, but, you know, experiences can be expensive themselves. So we definitely work that into our budget month to month. And it sounds like you have a very disciplined way of approaching that, which is, I mean, and it's great. I mean, I, I feel a little bit assured that, you know, like I, I'm not having to worry about material things either. I got shirts that are from 1994, 1995. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, I get rid of that. It's 10 holes in it. Yeah. It's got to uh -huh. go. Like, well, I love that shirt, you know? So, but, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I know and I'm picking up as well, through our discussion, Paul, that also the, the idea of retirement is really important. Obviously, that's a, a big deal because I don't know how you view it in this sense, but you know, for me, retirement, maybe not like ending a certain work versus more of the lifestyle in the sense that you want. Retirement being almost equivalent to financial freedom, like having leverage to have the money you need 
and not have life dictate how you should live, you know, mm -hmm. and you're, yeah. you're your own boss, so to speak, you know? So, mm -hmm. I mean, you're still doing other things, maybe still have money coming in in other ways, passively, whatever it is. But I'm really curious, especially as it re is in regards to kids, because I don't have kids myself. So for me, anything that's budgeted is not, that's not an aspect in my wife and I's life, you know, but for, mm -hmm. I, I have a lot of friends that is a huge deal. So how, how is it, especially with you and your wife, when you're thinking about maybe your own personal goals for that day of financial freedom, whenever that comes and what that, whatever that looks like, how, how are you tangentiating that a little bit with balancing the expenses with kids and factoring in all those issues, which are many? Yeah. So kids are definitely expensive, but you know, I love both of my daughters. Um, they eat a lot. That's where we've really expanded our budget. <laughs> hey, we spent a lot of money right here on food too. That's a big thing. Yeah. I mean, I, I would say that they probably not really, but they consume like 20 pounds of fruit a day. So, Holy wow. um, yeah, really not that much, but, um, the, our, our food budget is probably the area that took the the biggest amount of adjusting once we started having kids, um, whether it's, you know, you need baby formula early on um, and then transitioning to foods. Um, so trying add, adding them into there definitely uh, reduce the amount of discretionary spending we had because we still need to prioritize investing for the future. So most, most time when I'm talking to people, I tell them, Hey, if you are, building a budget, which everybody should, um, the top expense items should be uh, investing and charity. And then from there, you would also add, you know, housing, transportation, food, that sort of thing. But, you know, those two need to be a priority. And so when we're building our budget each month, those are non-negotiables. Those have to be taken care of. So we treat them like a that month expense right away to try to make sure that it's in there and that it just doesn't disappear because, you know, over time, if we just forget over the next several years that investing is needs to be a priority, then we'll arrive to want to retire one day and be like, okay, can we retire now or do we need to keep working? So um, it has been a, bud a, a budget readjustment with having kids and trying to balance that in there. Um, we're not currently setting any money aside for like college expenses uh, I'm still going back and forth whether or not um, how much I want to put in now versus how much I anticipate I'll be making at the point where they're in college. Um, but obviously, the, the rising price of education is trying to make me find where's that where's that sweet spot, where's that balance for preparing for their financial future too. My dad, when he told what he told me at eight years old, get a paper out if I because he's you want that uh -huh. bike, you go get a paper out, you know. So. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't think those will exist in, you know, a few years time, but you know, yeah. but the, you know, the thing is like, it's, it's amazing. Like all for me, it's fascinating. All these variables that you're thinking of and that you've thought of these last years in your life, how you tackled debt at the way you did, what you're thinking about now and what you're thinking about for the future as your family's expanding. I mean, these are all, you know, top of mind, top of heavy issues that require a lot of motivation and discipline. And it's amazing to hear that, you know, you're taking the tracks that you are for yourself and your family and, and everything going on. And I'm really interested, especially with what you're building, like on your Instagram channel. And by, by the way, viewers, listeners on the podcast and viewing platforms, we can include all of Paul's information in the video description, the show notes, the pinned comments, all of it. So you can connect with them after watching this episode, of course, um, or listening, uh, Paul. So what is it that you're really trying to accomplish now with what you're building on Instagram later? Like you said, probably YouTube, but why, why are you trying to reach out now to the younger generations, so millennials, alpha, you know, anyone mm -hmm. born after, uh, uh, maybe around <laughs> the second term or whenever yeah. that was, you know, <laughs> but, um, what, what, why are you trying to, what's your mission with this? Like, why are you trying to reach mm -hmm. out to them? What are you trying to say to them? And why do you think it's important? Mm -hmm. I just, there's so many people, um, including our parents that have done like a mid-career change and 
they're now preparing for retirement, but I just look and see, okay, they could have retired or achieved some form of financial freedom um, sooner so that they can choose when they can retire down the road. So um, I just watching them and watching other friends that, uh, you know, are, are going through life and they're not really thinking of the future like I'm definitely a, a next steps kind of person. And so my, my bigger issue is actually trying to focus on the present as opposed to always looking towards what's next. Um, so I look forward and I'm like, okay, I got to help my, my friends prepare for this future and help them get there. And even though at the end of the day, it's not um, my responsibility, I just, I want to help them. So, you know, like I'm not a doctor, but if I'm sick, I want to have someone that's looking out for me. Um, someone that I can reach out to and say, Hey, what do you think about this? Um, and so I kind of want to be that, but for finances mm -hmm. is, you know, Hey, you don't have to focus on this. You don't have to learn every facet of it. There's some basic things that you should learn budgeting, some basic investing, but I want to be a resource for you to help you um, prepare for the future. So through the wealthy habit, I just want to provide um, resources. I'm about to release a, a budget template. Um, and, you know, moving forward, I plan on also releasing an investing course and then eventually a, um, a debt payoff program so that those that are struggling with the, the place that they're at and they don't have hope and they can't really see how they can get ahead of the mountain of debt in front of them, um, just to give them that hope, but also a program that could help them get through that time, be an encouragement to them uh, and just come alongside them. So I really just want to help prepare, you know, Gen Z, millennials, maybe even generation alpha. I, that's, I mean, that's like my kids. So I'm thinking, oh, they got time for now, but you know, and the earlier you can prepare for your financial future, the better off it'll be and the less preparing you have to do later. So um, just have a desire to really help people, um, you know, get ahead with their finances. That's amazing. And especially because technology is going to be such a incorporal part of, well, virtually every single thing we yeah. do in our life from here on out as it has tremendously accelerated since the early 2000s and it's going to exponentially go places we can you know science fiction arenas you know oh, yeah. so how how does that play in in the way that you you know present what you know and want to help people with especially when this comes to investing because how do you put across the importance of investing investing early and the manners in which to do it, because there's all these different tools, you know, like the, just, I mean, the mobiles, everything, you know, not even the computer and more the mobile. So how, how do you put that message across in such a way for then these generations to be really engaged, especially with the technology aspect of investing? Yeah. So I think in some ways it's good to try to treat it like a game. So um, I actually have, as a money nerd, I have, probably a dozen different apps that I either use some of them more frequent, some of them less frequent, but I use them for budgeting, for calculating, Hey, I'm investing this much, this amount each month. How much is that going to grow to in the future? Um, so, I mean, there, there's so many apps to help out there with getting you excited and on board with what your money can do. Um, because, you know, if you just have a pen and paper, it's hard to see, okay, that's a cool number. But if you can see, you know, if I invest $500 a month for 40 years, I can have a couple million dollars, um, you know, in 30 or 40 years from now. So I'm, I'm really curious to see, and this, I don't know, how will, um, you know, the metaverse or the metaverses, how will that affect um, finances, but also how we engage with our finances? Because, um, you know, in that case, or it's people a people in general. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, I think it's going to be a, a huge shift. I don't know how fast it's going to roll out, but I, it's definitely going to play uh, a factor in, um, you know, personal finance as well, because you'll have a whole economy set up in a digital world um, and how that's going to look. So I, I think there's so many opportunities with that. Um, it's kind of like some of the, my most favorite uh, video games to play are ones that basically seem like real life. But I'm like, when I'm playing it, it sometimes feels more fun. So I'm hoping, um, you know, that the digital world uh, can kind of help 
perhaps Generation Alpha or Gen Z with that too of, hey, this encourages you to, to save for the future and see what your money can really do um, when you take charge of it and tell it where to go and what to do. Very interesting. And Paul, we only have time for a couple more questions, unfortunately, and hopefully you can come back at another point in the future for a part two and go into a deeper dive on some of the issues because I think your inside knowledge is really valuable. Um, the first thing I want to ask you, and then the last one would be talking about a more current uh, issues going on in 2022 as we're filming this, but I think they have, you know, a long lasting importance, you know, for any year, any economy in the future, as far as inflation right now, inflation is a big issue, right? In 2022 yeah. and people are worried about how it's affecting their finances, their investing, all of it. Right. We, we don't have to go in a whole economics course here <laughs> by any means, but in general, like as far as people's preoccupations and from what you know, for investing, Mm-hmm. and just general insights on what to consider for their own personal finances, what would be your, I would say, advice to both those things, you know, because some yeah. people are like, oh, I'm just going to get a stock market, forget about it. I mean, are, you know, as far as investing is concerned, do you think it's a good idea just to get out and forget about it or just continue to d- dollar cost average? And secondly, as it relates to the effect on personal people's finances what they you know spend day to day you know for mm-hmm. gas or groceries or some sort of advices or strategic insights you can give on that as well yeah so i would say definitely stay in the stock markets uh, no matter what it's doing um if you think about it this way the stock market is the collective mind of thousands and thousands of professional investors and everyday people like you and i so we cannot outsmart the collective knowledge of what is ultimately millions and millions of people. So I would say trying to time the market is probably never going to work out well. So stay in it. Um, I would say investing is also your best hedge against inflation. So last year um, for 2021, you know, inflation hits, I think at that point it was almost 8% for the year, um, but the stock market did a little over 28% for the S&P 500. So that means that even though inflation ate up 8%, you still made a plus 20% that year. And it's not going to do that every year. Some years it will be down. Um, but, you know, historically the stock market's up about 10%. Um, and the year before that, you know, when the pandemic was going on, we still ended the year about 18% um, up, even though we had a huge 33% drop. Um, and right now we're not even close to that. We're at, I think, 13 or 14 percent um, last I checked. So it, there's a good chance the market will go up tomorrow. There's a good chance it'll go down tomorrow. No one can really see what it's going to do short term. But, you know, long term, it has a good track record. Uh, it consistently way outperforms and beats inflation. So if you ever if you're trying to beat inflation, investing really is the way to go. Um, So I'd say that's for the investing side. On the personal side, you definitely have to reevaluate your budgets. Our our food budget and our energy costs have gone through the roof. Um, Over the last year, energy for uh, where we live has gone up about 50%, which when I got the first bill that where I could start seeing that, I was like, uh, we must have a leak or somewhere in our house or maybe running lights too long. But then I'm like, nope, it's just the cost of this energy. So you just have to reevaluate and rebalance your budget um, just to make sure that it's keeping up with inflation, but also trying to avoid lifestyle creep, which is where, you know, you get paid more. And so you just, you match that same pay with same spending. So I'm, I'm totally fine with putting some of that towards spending more, but, you know, uh, I think it's beneficial to increase how much you're contributing towards investing and will help you further you know, hedge against inflation um, and prepare for your future. Well, and it's re- it's really great insight and advice on both you know themes there that you're adhering to, and and I really you know I think it's really, really important for viewers and listeners. And something I'm taking away from is like when you do get paid, like make sure, like you said, in, in the top two priorities: invest right away, so you just set out there, forget about it, and give it to your future <laughs> self and your family, and your wife, and whoever. Secondly, give, you know, we can Mm -hmm. always give back and we can always 
make the people around us, our communities that much better by giving and, you know, that your heart just expands in the end of the day. Yes. So that, it's so incredibly important. So I think that's a golden advice, Paul. And just lastly, the, um, to conclude this episode, and it's been an absolute pleasure having you on, Paul, and I truly thank you very much. I just want to ask you, you know, what what is it that you personally, as Paul, are hoping to, you know, let's say 10, 15 years from now, like, I, I don't necessarily want to say leave a legacy, so to speak, but how, how is it that you envision yourself making a difference in this world? Yeah. So, I mean, I'd really love to take the wealthy habit uh, as my full-time um, gig in the future. So, you know, right now I have a, a nine to five day job and I do this on the side. I'd really like it to be the focus where I can just pour all my energy and attention into it. Um, and ultimately, like there's so many opportunities and there's so many people that I'm excited to help and want to help um, that I, I think it'd be cool to train other people to do, you know, coaching. Um, so I'm, I'm going to start coaching people pretty soon, helping them with their finances coming alongside them. And I'd love to train other people to do that too. So it has a multiplier effect. So it's not just, you know, what can I do, but what we, can we all do to try to help each other get ahead um, and just, you know, excel with our finances. Excellent. Excellent. And I'm sure you will achieve that. And as long as you got that amazing wife backing you and motivating you, I'm sure you'll, you'll be the CEO with a thousand employees. So <laughs> of your own company, yeah, of course, you know, so that's amazing. Paul, thank you so yeah. very much for this incredible insight, this golden advice that you've given to our viewing and listening audience. It's, I'm truly grateful. And where can people find with you, connect with you, follow you, engage with you and work with you? Yeah. Thanks for having me on. I've really enjoyed talking about this. I can first talk about this all day long. So uh, I really appreciate you having me on. So currently I'm on Instagram. My handle is the wealthy habits. Um, I'm planning over the summer to start launching YouTube where, um, you know, it'll be the same, the same name, the wealthy habit. And uh, from there, just add, you know, more detail into instead of having, you know, a 15, 20 second reel trying to nutshell what's going on in the economy, I can dive in 10 or 15 minutes. And, um, you know, for those that are interested and want to actually learn more detail about that subject, just offering that. Um, and then in the future, don't know when I, I will have a website set up. Um, but I just figured, you know, Instagram is a good place to start. There's billion users on there. So, uh, a lot of people, solid base to start working with. Um, and yeah, so I, I'm, I'm really excited about the future of the wealthy habits um, and just that, that whole personal finance community, uh, building each other up and just having a desire to um, financially educate, um, you know, the world and, you know, a raising tide, uh, a rising tide lifts all boats. So that, that's, that's my mental mentality and how I approach it. That's amazing, Paul. And I'm sure without a doubt, you're going to be very successful. You're going to help so many people. You're going to impact so many lives. And I continue to wish you all the success in your endeavors and all of these projects you have coming up. Sounds really, really great. And we're going to make sure to include all Paul's information again in the description and the pinned comments and the show notes on the podcast platforms everywhere. So people can find and connect with you in infinitum. So you'll always be found no matter what, Paul. So we truly thank you so very much for being on this episode and we'll see you on the next one, everyone. Take care.